good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson where we will carry on doing paper to revision of uh, basically looking at um, paper two in preparation for your paper two in a couple of weeks time. Hey, I think it's on the, what is it? The 15th of November, somewhere around there, 18th of November. Okay, so we carry on looking at um, IB papers and we're just going to keep on going through it. Okay, um, so it says a circle has an equation of x squared minus 2x plus y squared plus 6y equals 15. It says find the coordinates of center A and the radius of the circle. Okay, so by doing that, what they're doing is they're actually being mean and they're actually wanting you to basically you complete the square. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, fine, x squared minus 2x plus y squared plus 6y equals 15. So now we need to complete the square. So how do you complete the square? You go x squared minus 2x. And what do we do? We halve this and we square it. So we add 2 divided by 2 squared plus then we go y squared plus 6y and then what do we do we halve it and square it so it's plus 6 over 2 all squared but what you do to the one side you have to do to the other side otherwise you're messing with the equation okay so it's 15 plus 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 1 squared is 1 plus 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. Okay, and then what do we do? We take the square root of x squared, the minus sign, and the square root of this. So that is just 1 all squared plus square root of the first one, which is y, the sine of this, which is plus, the square root of this, 65 by 2 is 3, all squared is equal to 25, 15 plus 10 is 25. So therefore the center, the center is going to be 1 minus 3. So that is 1 minus 3. And remember the radius is the square root of this. So the radius is going to be 5. And I'm going to write out the equation here again so that we know what it is. It's x minus 1 squared plus y plus 3 squared is equal to 25. And um, it's also it's good to have a look and see it makes sense. So if you look over here, you've got x is 1, y is minus 3. That would put it in the fourth quadrant. And yes, it is in the fourth quadrant. So that's great. Okay, so now we find the coordinates of the center of the circle A and the radius of the circle. Just please note that they've asked you to find the coordinates of the center of the center and the radius. And the way we did this was to find the equation of the circle. That does not mean okay that you need to leave the answer as it is it is as it is okay in other words just re writing down the equation of the, of the circle doesn't mean you've answered this you have to then go center is one minus three and radius is five if you don't write that down you're not actually answering the question and there are marks allocated for that so you will lose marks so please be careful of that okay now let me just erase some of this and then they said determine the coordinates for the next question 3.1.2 determine the coordinates of b and c the x coordinates of the circle okay so we want the x coordinates what is special about the x coordinates is that what is the value of y at this point do you agree that the y value is zero okay all the way along here y is zero so we are going to solve this equation but we're going to let y equal zero so therefore we've got x minus one squared plus zero plus three squared is equal to 25. therefore we've got x squared minus 2x plus one plus nine equals 25 
I'm going to bring the number to this side because as you can see this is a quadratic. It should be a trinomial quadratic, whatever you want to call it, because we should be getting two values. So let's bring everything to the side. We've got x squared minus 2x plus 10 minus 25 equals 0. So if we simplify that, we've got x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. We can factorize that and it becomes x minus 5, x plus 3. Therefore, x is equal to 5 or x equals minus 3. So therefore, this value here is going to be, and notice they've said determine the coordinates of B and C. So you can't just write that, that we haven't finished by writing that. They want the coordinates. So you need to write that it is minus 3, 0, and that it is 5, 0. If you just write that, you haven't answered the question, and then you lose marks. So please be careful of that. Right, then it says, and I'm going to erase this work again now. Guys, as always, I'm just going to say to you that if you are concerned about me um, erasing the work while you're still watching, please understand and remember that these videos, these lessons are all recorded. So you can just go back to the lesson in exactly the same way that you originally found it and you'll be able to watch it again. Um, so it's not a big deal that I've erased that working now. It says determine the equation of the tangent to the circle at five minus six. They're saying assume there's a line which is a tangent and they want the equation of the tangent. So first of all, we know the tangent is a straight line. So therefore it's got the equation y is equal to mx plus c. In order to find the equation of the straight line, one of the ways we can do it is to find, he use a point and a gradient, okay? So we've got the point, we need the gradient of this line. But do you agree, we can get the gradient of this line, which is perpendicular to the tangent because that's the radius. So we can find M of AD, which is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Doesn't matter which point you call two or one. So I'm gonna go minus six minus minus three over five minus one. So that becomes minus six plus three is minus three. 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay, so that is the gradient of AD. But this line here is a tangent, so it's perpendicular to the radius. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent is going to be 4 over 3. And how do I know that? Because perpendicular lines what happens is m1 multiplied by m2 is equal to negative 1. Therefore, m2 is equal to minus 1 over m1. In other words, I tip, and I, I tip it and I multiply by minus 1. So I n tip it, so that becomes 4 over 3, and times by minus 1 becomes 4 over 3. So now I have the equation y is equal to 4 over 3x plus C, get in there, we've got the gradient. Now we need to find the Y cut, but we've got this point five minus six, right? So we can substitute in, so we can go minus six is equal to four over three multiplied by five plus C. Okay, so that becomes minus six minus 20 over 3 is equal to C, and we can just pop that in our calculator. So that becomes minus 6 minus fraction 20 over 3 equals, and that's minus 38 over 3 or minus 12.6 seven which would be minus twelve and two thirds. So we could say this is minus twelve and two thirds. So therefore we can say the equation to this is y is equal to four over three x minus twelve and two thirds. Okay. 
Right, now they've asked us to determine the area of triangle ABC. Okay, just give me half a second. Half a second. Okay, they want the area of triangle ABC. Uh, change color, let's go for green. Area of triangle A, A, B, C. Okay, so do you agree that we can use that as the base and we can drop a perpendicular from A down and that would be the height? Okay, so therefore the height is going to be six units because this is minus six below the x axis and this bit here is eight units. So we can say area is a half times base times height which is a half times the base, that's three units and that's five units, that so makes a total of eight units. And the height of this thing, this is negative three, right? So therefore that, sorry, I was reading minus six, it's minus three. So therefore that height there is just going to be three. So therefore it's four times three, which is 12 square units. Okay, so 12 square units. Now it says, given another circle sitting at x is minus 1, sorry, x is 1, y equals b, and it just touches the circle, center 8 on one point only, determine the value or values of b. Okay, so what do they say? And they say there's another circle at x equals 1, y is some random point b. And it has a radius only of one and it wants to determine the values of B. Okay, so let me just think about this. It says given the circle, so we've got some other circle, okay, but it is centered at X equals one. Oh, so it's just somewhere along this line. Let me just erase that triangle. It's driving me insane. Can't draw everything. If it's there. Okay, right. Here we go. There we go. That's much better. Okay, right. And I'm going to get rid of that point. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. Don't need that. Okay, so we're saying that there is some change color. There is some circle on this line here that is touching the circle. Okay, it's on the circle line. It has a radius of one, only of one. Okay, so do you agree it is either gonna touch somewhere up here or therefore it's gonna touch somewhere up here? Okay, so that is it. It can't touch anywhere else because the center of the circle is along the x equals one axis and it has a radius of one. It has a radius of one. So therefore it is somewhere along this line. It could be here, but it would also be touching there and it could be here, but it would also be touching just over there. So therefore do you agree that to find what the B points are, we really just need to find out what the value of our circle is when x equals one. Okay, so when x equals 1, this bit here goes away. Okay, so we've got y plus 3 squared is equal to 25. So therefore we've got um, just a second. So therefore we've got y squared plus 6y plus 9 is equal to 25. If we take that across, we've got y squared plus 6y. 9 from 25, or 25 minus 9 is 16, so it's minus 16 equals 0. The factors are 16 or 8 and 2, so it's going to be, uh, can't be 8 and 2 because it's a negative and that's a positive. Yes, it can be 8 and 2. It's going to be plus 8 and y minus 2 equals 0. 
Therefore, y is equal to minus 8 or y equals 2. So therefore, the values of b are either going to be um, one away from that. So this point here, do you agree that that point there is going to be either 2 and this point here is, this point here is negative 8. So do you agree that the values of b, it's quite a nice question this, are either going to be negative 7, because then the circle will get over there, or it will be negative 9, because then the circle's over there, or it will be at 1, um, or it will be at 3. So the values or values of b were going to be at minus 9, minus 7, at 1, and 3. Hmm, quite a nice question that one, quite sneaky. Right, now it says, new question. Simplify as far as possible tan of 180 minus beta, sine of 90 minus beta, sine beta minus cos squared beta minus 180. If sine A, oh, uh, this is a different question. Okay, so let's do this first. Tan of 180. So the first thing we need to do is draw our cast diagram. So it's all stations to Cape Town. So we're doing tan of 180 minus betas over here in the second quadrant. So it's going to be negative. Let me just write a little bit further to the left. Okay, so it is going to be minus tan beta multiplied by sine of 90 minus beta, that's in the first quadrant, and sine of 90 minus is a co-ratio, that is just cos beta. Then we are multiplying it again by sine beta, so that's just sine beta. Okay, minus cos squared, beta minus 180. So that's the same as saying beta, here's our beta, and now we're minusing 180. So we're ending up in the third quadrant, but then we're squaring it, so it doesn't matter too much. So that's just going to be cos squared, it's cos squared beta. So then do you agree that what happens is this becomes minus sine beta over cos beta times by cos beta times by sine beta minus cos squared beta. This cos beta cancels with that one. So you end up with minus sine squared beta minus cos squared beta, which equals minus sine squared beta plus cos squared beta, which equals negative one. Ta-da! Not too difficult, hey? Not too bad. Right, let's look at this one. It says sine A is minus 2 over root 3. Okay, so let's just draw a little star. All stations to Cape Town, and it's a negative. So the sign has to be in this quadrant or this quadrant. But they say that A is between 90 and minus 90. So it has to be in the third quadrant. Right, so let's draw this. Okay. So we're saying that sine of A, which is opposite over our hypotenuse, is minus 3 over 2 root 3. That's what they're telling us, that this is opposite over our hypotenuse, is minus 3 over 2 root 3. Um, the term and without using calculator with the aid of a with the value of cos A. Okay. So what we need to do is just look at something yeah, okay, fine. So what we need to do is work out what this side is, which we'll call x. So do you agree that we could say r squared minus y squared square rooted is going to give me x? Okay, that's by Pythagoras. So therefore we could say, um, we could start off a little bit more simply just to make it easier for ourselves, is we could erase that. And we could say that r squared minus y squared equals x squared. So then r is the hypotenuse, so it's 2 root 3 all squared minus minus 3 all squared is equal to x squared. Agreed? So then we could say, well, this becomes 4 multiplied by 3 
minus 9 is equal to x squared. 4 multiplied by 3 is 3 is 12, do you agree? And 12 minus 9 is 4 is equal to x squared. So therefore, x equals plus or minus 2. So therefore, this is going to be negative 2. And the reason it's negative is obviously because it's on the negative x-axis. Right, now that we've got that, cos of a is going to be easy to find because cos of a is what? It is opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Okay, opposite over adjacent. It, no, it's not. It's opposite of our hypotenuse. Ah, it's adjacent of our hypotenuse. Ah, okay, let me see. Sakatoa. Sakatoa. So, because is adjacent of our hypotenuse, so it's minus 2 over 2 root 3, which is just going to be negative 1 over root 3. Okay, everybody happy with that? Now they want to know what the size of angle A actually is. Okay, so now I want to show you something. Let's say we've got a special triangle. Okay, and do you agree that this would be, if this was 60 and this is 30, I apologize for the horrible drawing. If this is 60, then this would be 2, 1, root 3. Okay, 2, 1, root 3. Um, okay. but they just want the size of A. Okay, so we've got cos of A is adjacent to our part news, which is going to be minus two over two root three, which is one over root three. Okay. Um, which doesn't really help here. I thought it was going to help because I thought it was going to be a special triangle. But it says it's not using a calculator. I'm mapping dwarf. If I multiply this by, oh, hang on. If I multiply this by root three, and I multiply this by root 3, and I multiply this by root 3. This becomes 2 root 3, this becomes 3, but this becomes 1 times root 3. Maybe I did this wrong. Let me look at this. This is 2 times root 3 squared minus minus 3. Okay. Um... Well, it doesn't matter because it gets squared. So this becomes 4 times 3, which is 12. Minus 3 squared, which is 9. 12 minus 9 is 4. So that is right. That is a 2. So that is not a 60 30 triangle. So I don't know how I'm supposed to get this without using my calculator. Let's go use the calculator. So we're going to go shift cos of. 1 over root 3 close bracket equals here you see it's not a special triangle at all 54.74 I think they meant just for this answer this you have to use a calculator it's 54 74 yeah badly worded Okay, let's look at this graph. Okay, it says we've got two trig graphs. The first one is the black one, which says that f of x is sine x minus 30. So here is your graph, and you can see that normally it would normally be at zero. It's now at 30, okay? Um, and where it normally is, okay, so therefore it's going to be at 30 there, where it's normally at 90, it's going to be at 120, etc. So it's been moved over, okay? G of x is cos 2x, so that affects the, the period of the graph. And if you look here, it's where it's normally at 90, it's now at 45, 
where it's normally at 180, it's now at 90, okay? So the first thing they ask you is, what is the period of graph F, F? And the period of the graph F is still the full 360 degrees, okay? Because of the fact that the moving it over by x minus 30 degrees does not change the period of the graph. The period of the graph is how long it takes to complete one wave, and that is 360 degrees. Then this is state the amplitude of graph G, and that is still 1. Why? Because this cos 2x does not affect the amplitude, and the amplitude is still going to be 1. Now it says, how many solutions does the equation sine of x minus 30 equals cos 2x have? for minus 180 to 180. In other words, they want to know how often do these graphs cross between minus 180 and 180. So it's easy enough. It's 1, 2, 3, 4. So the correct answer is 4. Okay, so that was pretty easy, right? Do you agree? Now it says, for which values of x is cos squared x equal to sine squared x? If x is between naught and 180. It says show how the graph above can be used to answer this question. Okay, so they want to know for which value or values of x is cos squared x equal to sine squared x. If the above answer graph, show the graph above, how the graph above can be used to answer this question. Okay, so the above graph is cos 2x. Okay. But do you agree cos 2x can be rewritten? It's got um, it's got other ways to write it. And the one way is to write it as cos squared x minus sine squared x. Okay. So do you agree I could rewrite that? I could say, well, cos squared x equals sine squared x. I could rewrite that as cos squared x minus sine squared x equals zero, okay? So in other words, what we're doing is saying when is cos 2x equal to zero between naught and 180? In other words, when is the red graph equal to zero between naught and 180? And it's going to be at x equals 45 and x equals 135 degrees. So it'll be x equals 45 degrees or x is 135 degrees. There you go. Now it says, let me erase this little line here so I've got space to write and we'll change color. Okay, now it says for which value or values of x is cos 2x multiplied by sine of x minus 30 greater than or equal to naught. Okay, so what they're really asking is when are the y values both positive or when are the y values both negative? Okay, when are they both positive and when are they both negative? Okay, because a positive times a positive is a positive and a negative times a negative is a positive as well. Obviously, you'll also include zeros, okay? So this will be between 0 and 180. So obviously, we have to include that value there because they are both, well, no, we won't. Uh, let's just erase that. I'm being an idiot. At that point, y is not zero. We want y equal to zero. So, do you agree at this point here, this line is positive and that line is positive, okay? Up to, yeah, up to there. Okay, up to there. So, from there to there, from x equals 30 to x equals 45, they are both positive or equal to zero. Then the one, the red is negative and the black is positive. And then we've got from there through to 180. So I would say for X is smaller than or equal to 45 degrees, but greater than or equal to 30. Or for X is greater than or equal to 135 degrees. And obviously, we don't have to go any further because they've already closed us off at 180 degrees, so we didn't have enough to include that. Now it says, if the graph of F, this one here, is translated down three units, what is the equation of the resulting function? Okay, so that's really not that difficult because we're going to go y is equal to sine x minus 30 degrees 
minus 3. What you need to realize is this x minus 30, the 30 belongs to the x. So that's all one thing. And then you have to subtract 3 because the y value is now going to be 3 units lower than what it originally was. Okay. Now it says, <coughs> use cos of a plus b equals cos a cos b minus sine a sine b to derive the formula. Okay, I'm not going to do that. You guys really need to learn your theory. I'm not going to spend, I've gone through this in the lessons on the trick. So if you don't know how to do this, go find the lessons on your double angles, your compound angles, and go look for it. And I promise you, there is a derivation I have explained it already. I'm not doing it now again. Now they say, and here's the hint, after you've proved that, they now say prove sine 3x over sine x minus cos 3x over cos x equals 2. So obviously we have to use this type of formula to solve this, okay? So obviously we can't do anything with the right hand side, I mean 2 really, um, but we can play with the left hand side. So let's go left hand side. We've got sine 3x over sine x minus cos 3x over cos x. Okay, so let's break this up. Sine 3x can be written as sine 2x plus x. Do you agree? We can write this as sine 2x plus x all over sine x. Actually, there's a... Yeah, there's a better way to do this. Let me show you the better way. Okay, do you agree I can get a common denominator of sine x cos x? So I can get a common denominator of sine x cos x, right? And then this would become cos x sine 3x minus um, sine x cos 3x, okay? Do you see that then we've got a cos sine sine cos? So therefore, this becomes um, a sine of, and it's sine of 3x minus cos x. Oh, sorry, 3x minus x. 3x minus x, that's the rule purple minus x all over sine x cos x right which equals sine 2x over sine x cos x sine 2x can be written as 2 sine x cos x all over the denominator of sine x cos x this cancels this, this cancels this, and you left with two. Ta -da! Just proven. Okay, you could have gone the way I was originally doing. We were going sine to x plus x, and then um, cos 2x plus x, and then multiply it out, and go on forever and ever and ever. Okay, you could have done that, but this is a much quicker way of doing it. Okay, happy with that. Right, let's move on. Let's see. It says determine the general solution of the equation. And we've got 6 cos 2x plus cos x plus 6 equals 0. Okay, now cos 2x can be one of three things. It can either be cos squared x minus sine squared x, or it can be 2 cos squared x minus 1, or it can be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And since we've got a cos x over here, I'm going to choose the middle dude, okay? So I'm going to go 6 and then 2 cos squared x minus 1 plus cos x plus 6 equals 0. So that becomes 12 cos squared x minus 6 plus cos x plus 6 equals 0. The minus 6 and plus 6 goes to 0, right? So you left with 12 cos squared x plus cos x. So do you agree I can take out a common factor of cos x? And I'm left with 12 minus, no plus, 12 cos x, sorry, plus 1 equals 0. 
Therefore, we've got cos x equals zero, or we've got cos x is equal to negative one over 12. Okay, now we can find our reference angles. So we're gonna go, um, let's clear first, and then we're gonna go shift on shift cos of zero, 90. So therefore x equals 90 plus k 360. Or let's do this one. It's shift cos fraction. And remember, you don't put the minus in. The minus just tells you about quadrants. Okay, so it's just 1 over 12. No, delete. 12. Close bracket. Equals 85.22. So it's 85, comma, to two, but remember it's in the negative quadrant, but you don't have to worry about that too much because, okay, so it's in the negative quadrant. So it's going to be, stations two, kept down. So it's either gonna be, or either, that means it's either gonna be 180 minus 85 comma two two plus K 360, or it's going to be 180 plus 85 comma 22 plus k 360 because remember this just gives you a reference angle the size angle the minus tells you where you're going to find it so it's either going to be in the second quadrant or the third quadrant so it's 180 minus 85.22 or 180 plus 85.22 and then the k 360 is the fact that it can keep going around as many times as once and the period of a cos graph is 360. Okay, sure. Wow. Okay, now let's have a look at this. It says the upper surface of a right prism is an isosceles triangle. So this is an isosceles triangle, which I've told us, and this side is x and this is x, with AB equal to BC equal to x and ABC equal to alpha and CAE, CAE equal to theta. Okay, it says show the length of CE is given by x tan theta whatever, whatever, whatever okay so do you agree that our line that is the bridge is this line here this bridge line is bridging the gray triangle to our triangle over here which has got the ce in okay so we have to somehow relate this yellow line to this um triangle thing here but you'll notice that this is an equilateral triangle so we don't know these sides of the angles okay so we've got two sides in an enclosed angle and we want a third side the minute we've got two sides in an enclosed angle one third side we need to use the cos rule which is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a okay so this would be a B and this would be a C. Okay, so we can say AC squared, AC squared is equal to X squared plus X squared minus two X multiplied by X cos alpha. Okay, so do you agree that therefore AC squared is gonna be two X squared minus two X squared cos alpha? Alpha, I don't know why I keep saying A. Well, no, let me just erase that and write alpha. Oh, that's why it's A. Right, so that's alpha and that's alpha. Okay, so now we've got AC squared. Okay, now we can get CE because we've got theta. And tan theta is opposite, which is CE over adjacent, okay? So tan of theta is equal to CE over AC. So therefore, do you agree that we can say CE is equal to AC tan theta? So therefore, we can say that it is the square root of, so it's tan theta multiplied by the square root of 
2x squared minus 2x squared cos alpha. So then we can take out a common factor of x squared and square root it, so it becomes x tan alpha square root 2, take out a common factor 2, 1 minus cos alpha. And there you go. Yay! Perfect. Okay, so we will continue with this tomorrow from question 7.2. Have a great night. Cheers.